All right, welcome back to the workshop series four on instant payment. This is the fourth session. In the previous session, you would have seen how India's UPI network has changed the payment landscape in India. Further improvement came with the, improve, with the introduction of UPI Lite. So let's understand what UPI Lite is about and demystify certain myths about this payment method. Before we go to UPI Lite, let's understand the, the current how UPI works. So if you have a sender using a payment service application provider's uh, app to send money to a receiver, the request goes from the app to the NPCI network or the switch, which in turn sends a request for debit to the sender's database. And on successful approval, it sends a request for credit to the receiver's database of core banking and a notification comes to the receiver that has received the funds. Now, this is a very high level. For more details, you can refer to the previous video where this has been presented in greater detail. So if you can see, there is a direct interaction between both the core banking for the sender's core banking and the receiver's core bank. Now, how has it changed with UPI Lite? So what happens here is that a small wallet has been introduced as part of the, uh, the payment service provider's application. Of course, not a physical wallet, it's a logical wallet. And you can load certain money in this wallet. And then when you are sending payment, you can choose to debit the money from the wallet instead of from your core banking account. So let's assume a case wherein the sender wants to send the money to the receiver. He says that, okay, debit from my wallet instead of my bank account. So the request will go to a PCI switch and then the switch forwards it to the receiver's core banking for credit because the debit has already happened in the wallet. So no need to send a request to the sender's core banking. So once the credit is done, the receiver gets the notification. So in very simple term, this is the missing leg between the switch and the sender's core banking. So what the advantages? Now you have also seen the statistics wherein 50% of the UPI transactions are less than 200, 75 less than 600. So the UPI transactions are growing day by day. It's reached almost a billion per month. So this method actually reduces load on the infra UPI infrastructure as well as the core banking because of the missing link which I mentioned earlier. So naturally because of these not hitting the core banking, it reduces the clutter of small payments which you see in your account statement. Some key features, you can make payments up to 500 rupees. It was 200 has been increased. You can add up to 2000 rupees to your UPI Lite wallet. Remember this wallet is different from other wallets like a Paytm wallet or a Mobiquick wallet because this is not a PPI or a prepaid instrument, right? So you don't have to enter a PIN or a UPI PIN to initiate a transaction. You can use any UPI code, uh, UPI, UPI QR code, just like you used to do before, like any normal UPI payment. The money will be credited to the recipient's bank account directly. It will not be credited to the UPI Lite wallet. This is important. So this means that in the previous example, even though if the receiver had a wallet, the credit will always go to the account of the receiver. You can enable UPI Lite for only one account in an app. And of course, you can withdraw your money from the UPI Lite anytime you want without any charges. So thanks for being with us in this fourth session. So there's a lot more innovations coming up with NFC and conversational payments through UPI. So watch out for that in the subsequent videos. Thank you.